These right here. Now this one has me nervous. Today we have a summer pickups video. But this one's a little bit special because we have a wide range of products. As we approach the end of summertime here in Washington, we have about one month left of sunshine beaming down upon us before we are bombarded with clouds and rain for the remainder of the year. But basically we have some pickups that can be worn during the summertime, during the winter time, and some that can be worn year round. Now the majority of these products did come from Farfetch. For those of you guys that do not know, Farfetch is an online retailer that has a wide slew of product, primarily because of their unique business business model, which we'll talk more about that in a moment. But I do want to say I will leave a link to the majority of the products that I showcase today in the description down below, as well as a link to Farfetch. So if you see anything you like while you are perusing the website, make sure you use my discount code Jacob10YT. That's J-A-C-O-B 10YT. And as that 10 within that discount code signifies, it will get you guys 10% off your order. The rules and regulations to that discount code will be in the description down below, right underneath the links to the products. I've definitely held some negative opinions about some of these brands. In fact, we'll just do this. I'm going to put all the brands that I'm showing you guys in this video today, guess in the comments which brands I have had negative opinions about in the past. And at the end of the video, when we discuss this topic where I call myself out, I do a little bit of self-exposing. You guys can let me know if you were right. While you're down there in the comments, I do hate panhandling for engagement, but I would sincerely appreciate it if you took a second to smash the like button down below, subscribe and turn on post notifications if you like the video, watch the video all the way through, save and share, do whatever you gotta do. Any interaction with the video does help feed the YouTube algorithm gods. Now the item I got from Amiri were these bandana shorts. I see a lot of brands doing this style of short. They're not quite doing it like Amiri because Mr. Mike Amiri had his grandmother risk her fingertips to crochet these knitted bandana masterpieces. The fact that these are knitted is insane. They're actually quite breathable. You have the same Amiri logo that you see on these hats that I never freaking take off my dome piece on both sides. It's kind of like a vintage basketball styled short. Stripe going around the bottom, notch right here. And it's not a short short, but it's a shorter short. My first piece of Amiri was actually this hat right here. Actually, it was this hat right here, but I mean, they're basically the same hat, except this one right here is a trucker hat. The trucker does not fit quite as good as these normal snapbacks. If you follow me on Instagram, at the star life, T-H-E-S-T-A-R-R-L-I-F-E. I have worn this hat so many freaking times. So once I got this hat, I then went and bought this hat, and then I went back and bought this hat. These hats are so freaking comfortable. They fit exactly like this vintage hat that I got from the Goodwill bins. This hat is from 1988. How Mr. Mike Amiri perfected the fit of these hats to fit my abnormally large cranium, I have no idea, but the man definitely gets some respect for that and gets some respect for these because these also fit absolutely swell. I did go with a size medium. Normally with a short like this, I would go with a size small. After looking at Farfetch's fit predictor, which is basically a tool that Farfetch has that will predict the fit of a particular product based off of your past purchases. As you purchase more through Farfetch, it gets better at actually predicting the fit. And if you don't have any past purchases with Farfetch, they still will usually have a model with the model's measurements and the size that that model is wearing. Now, I did get two other pairs of shorts. I got these Russell Athletic Vintage Shorts, which I'll talk about where I got these later on. These are a little more lightweight and they have no pockets, so they're not super good for exploring anywhere outside the house. Made in the USA, of course. And then we also got these shorts from Reese Cooper. Reese Cooper is a younger designer. I really like the style of a lot of his garments. They have a super nice fit, and unlike those Russell Athletic Shorts, you do not have to worry about not having pockets to store your goods because you have many a pocket placed throughout this short. I actually showed off Reese Cooper before. This this right here is probably one of the most popular pieces I've shown off. I had so many people trying to go buy this. Let's show off something new that I have not shown off on the channel. These are the Hoka One Ones. I know it looks like 1-1. One, one. No, it's not 1-1. One, one. Essentially, it means to fly over the earth. The Hoka One One was started by two former Solomon employees. And what's kind of interesting about this brand, when everyone was trying to transition to minimalist running shoes, like those little toe shoes. Bro, what's on your feet? What are those? My foot gloves? I used to see those all the time when I was in the military. These are actually really similar to a pair of Danner boots that I had in Afghanistan. Hoka One One went a complete different route. Instead of going that minimalist route, they actually went the maximalist route where they actually added a bunch of cushion, a bunch of support, a bunch of little things that would help the individual that the shoe was designed for, whether it be a runner or hiker. And you know I had to put this to the test. You guys know if you've been following the channel for some time or if you've been following my Instagram for some time, no matter what the style is, I like to take these clothes outdoors, whether it's a height beast encampment or whether it's just me hiking to the peak of a mountain with a Siberian Husky or freaking having birds eat little treats out of my hair. So we had to put these to the test. I'm not gonna lie, they're pretty comfortable.
like these shoes make me look taller. Good boy. <laughs> we do also have these beautiful toga gorillas. You guys know it would not be a far-fetched unboxing if I did not cop a pair. A little bit different. I think some people will like them, some people will hate them. I'm just trying new things. These things are absolutely gorgeous. It's not a traditional mule because it does have a little bit of a cup and you even have this croc-like battle strap. But the metal embellishments throughout this piece are insane and I love the fact that I could wear this with a baggy pant. A lot of people wouldn't even know that I just slipped these on. I also love this. You guys watched the video. I think I titled it something along the lines of like changing my style or styled by the best dressed YouTuber. He actually had me in some Balenciaga harness boots, which I love so much that I actually went and purchased my own pair afterwards. <laughs> I love Togo Brillas. I love the way they look. I love all these little metal embellishments. They're not the most comfortable, but they are absolutely gorgeous. So in the last video, I purchased these beautiful Mason Margiela deconstructed denims. And I told you guys, I have been thinking about buying the black one as well, just because I love how these fit so freaking much. Instead of two different shades of blue, you have black and then you have this gray. Just like the other pant, you do have the washes of each denim. I didn't want to risk them selling out. I don't know if they still have them. If they do, I would recommend going true to size. I hate wearing a belt, but I also feel like the outfit looks incomplete if you don't have a belt. But since this actually cuts like half of your belt loop section off, it actually looks good without a belt. When I was looking into Mason Margiela, when I learned that a lot of his inspiration actually came from flea markets or secondhand stores, that made a lot of sense to me. And it also made me appreciate a lot of the stuff even more because as you guys know, one of the first things I was doing on this channel was thrifting. But after learning more about Margiela, and trying those two pants and those basically being the two best pairs of pants in my collection Which is saying a lot because I literally devoted my pantry to my pants. It is not a pantry It is a pantry pant collection coming soon like detox after they fit so freaking amazing Your boy had to cop another pair and this pair is a little bit different It's not deconstructed like the other pairs It actually has a complete upper so you can actually use a belt on these beauties and just look at how gorgeous These things are these things are looking absolutely scrumptious one cool thing about these two is they have the same clasp that the other pair has. Once again, you have the wash of the denim. You don't have any crazy branding or anything. You have these kind of like brushed metal pieces of hardware or rivets. I was wearing these the other day when I went up to Sneak City to film that last mystery box video. And Tia was actually amazed that I was not wearing sweatpants. Those pants are so freaking comfortable. I can wear those and it doesn't even feel like I'm wearing a pair of denim. And while we're talking about Margiela, it's only right, as I did last time, that we go hit a flea market because as I said, when Martin started the brand, he got a lot of his inspiration from flea markets, from secondhand stores. So it's only right we go check one out. All right, guys. On the way, my bro RJ told me about this little sale. This is my neat little pile. I just found this flannel. Fits perfectly. This is all the clothes? How much for this right here? How much you want to pay? Let's do 40. Let's That's keep too, changing. Too much. I'm very push. I can give some that. It is hotter than the devil's ball sack outside. That lady was so freaking nice. They tried bringing something to give to my mom. Not to mention, they literally said, just pay what you want. Plus, she already blessed my boy RJ with some crazy steals. So you know we got to return that energy. All right, RJ's over there tattooing. RJ got some crazy steals. Oh my God. Made in USA. This would low-key go with the Mason Margiela jeans that I just got. Ah, your Portland Harley Davidson. What would you sell these to me for? They're pretty good. <laughs> oh, man. We'll figure something out. Get the camera off. It is currently 4.06. Yo, it's good, man. Yeah, this one's fire. You make these pants? Do all the pants. I did that. Where'd you take this from? This panel right here. This was from some Carhartt. What'd you want for this? I would run it to you for 40 bucks. 40? Hell yeah. Good to see you, my dude. Yeah, nice to see you as well. I'm gonna do an awkward backup for transitioning purposes. <laughs> That flea market, that was two weeks ago. I have put so much extra work that will probably go unnoticed by the vast majority of viewers on this video. The Final Cut project files are looking crazy, but I do appreciate every single person that takes the time to comment, notices the little details. Even my boy Seth Fowler, a fellow YouTuber and a video editor showed some love. I just wanna say I appreciate every person who comments, who likes, just interacts with these videos in any way because you are the only reason I am here and able to keep creating content. I am gonna show you guys the vintage pickups from that day, but I'm only gonna show you guys the personal pickups. I'll show off the rest of the stuff that I found that day in a future trip to the thrift. And I also do have another piece from Farfetch to show you guys, which is this Rude hoodie. As you guys can see, it is a hoodie that has a big RH and this varsity block font on the front of it. And then the back says, Audacity to Dream, La Vallée Rude. This is an oversized fit. Once again, thanks to Farfetch, I was saved by the fit predictor. I did go down a size. I know the intended fit is to be oversized. Because I sized down, it does fit true to size. Normally, I do prefer a little bit more of a snug fit. My ideal fit for a hoodie is a Russell Athletic 
Nordic vintage hoodie previously owned by a short hobbit statured individual and one that was washed and conformed to that body type for an exceptionally long length of time. So when I tried this hoodie on, I didn't quite know how I felt about the fit. A friend of mine, Scoob, was over at my house. You guys may have seen him on my Instagram. If you guys saw my birthday post and you swiped through a couple photos, there's a picture of me, him, and our friend Dane. He literally stopped mid-sentence to let me know that hoodie is fire. I was kind of taken back by that because at that moment, all he saw was the RH. RH has become somewhat synonymous with the brand Rude. It was started by Ruigi, and I guess it's a family tradition. Starting all names with RHs. And he talks about his goal with Rude. He wants to create something that is appreciated by the youth. But also, through time, withstood the whole popular culture fad. Earlier, I put the logo of every brand that I showed off in this video on the screen, and I asked you guys to guess which brand I have had a negative opinion of in the past. And the answer was almost all of them. <laughs> you would have asked my opinion about Mason Margiela several years ago. I probably would have responded with something along the lines of the brand that makes the Michelin Man shoes. As I have looked through Mason Margiela's catalog, where Martin Margiela got a lot of the inspiration for his pieces from, it allowed me to understand certain pieces, even if it doesn't fit my particular style. With Rude and Amiri, those are both newer designers. Amiri was founded in 2014, Rude was founded in 2015. There are still things that both of these brands make that I would probably never wear. As I've learned more about both of these brands, it's kind of given me more appreciation for what they create. And then when you hear Ruigi talk about creating clothes that communicate with the youth, but still stand the test of time, and then you see it firsthand with my friend who comes over, likes something that I would find in the thrift and be super hyped about, something that could have been made 20 or 30 years ago. It's literally seeing his goal be accomplished in real time. And it's made me realize that I myself have been quick to dismiss certain styles or brands as well. If you go to farfetch.com and you go to designers, you select Rude, you can get pieces that look like clean, never worn vintage garments. Now, like I said, we do have some vintage goods as well. These next goods are not on Farfetch, but I cannot stress this enough. Farfetch does have a slew of product, as I said before. Farfetch has a business model where they source a lot of their product from boutiques around the world. It's not just stuff they hold in a warehouse. You might place an order and have one piece come from Italy, one piece come from Spain, and almost every single time, somehow it all gets here within two days, which I do respect the logistics. But it's cool because Farfetch has given a lot of these boutiques an opportunity to stay in business, especially with these last two years. Two recent pickups you guys may have seen in the background earlier are these two varsity jackets. This is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. This one, you can see it's sun faded. The patches are removed. It kind of has this cool, unique effect. This is actually from Air Portland. They did a collab with this company, Settle Myers. That's why it says, Settle My Hairs. Your name, we care a lot. And then on the back, it says, I don't know Nigo, which is a playoff of a friends and family varsity jacket. This particular jacket is not on Farfetch. They do have a great selection of varsity jackets. Try to get a link for the stadium jacket if they still have it in stock. Similar look, super cool green with a big S. It also has huge back Chanel patches. We do have two other vintage pickups to show you guys. One's kind of vintage, one's kind of not. This isn't super old. You can see the remainder of the A's on this all style tag. Probably like early 2000s. Love the graphic, I love the fade. And then this is an absolute beauty. A Banty from 1978. This thing is so sick. I love the fit of this. It's on one of my favorite vintage tags, especially because it has a smaller fit. It makes your boy look kind of buff. <laughs> but I do love this tee. There are certain bands like Styx, Guns N' Roses, Bon Jovi, Elton John. Those remind me of a time with my mom when we used to go on early Saturday morning drives. A lot of family things that we've gone through, whether it be losing my brother, my mom getting diagnosed with cancer, eating cancer. Tees like this definitely mean a lot to me just because it reminds me of a time or an era with my mom. Sometimes we would kind of fight over the radio. I'd be trying to play rap, she'd be trying to play rock. There are times where you can find stuff like this on Farfetch. Now, of course, I do want to say a huge thank you to Farfetch for sponsoring this video. I remember when I got this Farfetch sponsorship, my bro Phoenix, who has a couple videos here on YouTube. One video I wasn't in, but I was a part of. We basically gave some shoes to some neighborhood kids. Shout out Jacob Storm. Yeah, let's get these two. The only reason I wasn't in that video, I've always given shoes and clothes to homeless people from my city or kids within the neighborhood, friends of mine. Sometimes when you're a YouTuber, if you do something, even if you genuinely have the purpose to simply document and post it to encourage others to do the same, there are some people that will automatically dismiss it as just doing it for clout. So I never even put that in a video. I don't think I've ever even mentioned it until now. But when I first got sponsored by Farfetch, I went to his house and I told him because I was excited. Bro, I just got sponsored by Farfetch. He's another dude from the same neighborhood, been into clothes his whole life, and he was like, bro, that might be the hardest sponsor you've ever had. <laughs> I'm like, I know, right? That's just crazy. They've given me other opportunities to be featured in a Gucci campaign, talking about a pair of Gucci sneakers, which I talked about that in the last video. I'll leave that somewhere on the iCard if you didn't watch that, but it's just been crazy. So I do appreciate Farfetch. I wanna say thank you. Like I said, a link to the items I showed off will be in the description down below, along with a discount code at Jacob10YT, which will get you guys 10% off your order. So make sure you take advantage of that if you are shopping on Farfetch. If you don't like anything I showed off, there will be a general link to Farfetch 
Warfare, check it out, peruse the website. Even if you just want a window shop like I have done for many, many years, they got some cool shit on there. So definitely check it out. As I said, I would be nothing without you. So I appreciate you. Anyways, I'm gonna shut up. I've been ranting too long, but as always, keep living star life. Peace. Star life, Chris say shooting on Mets. God, these thoughts been ran through. God damn it, like Becky Chief, keep drop. I don't like that shit. Lil Reese in the cool clip, do a backflip.